Everyone is quitting. Seriously. If you go and search Amazon FBA right now, you're gonna find a bunch of gurus who are talking about how Amazon is dead. That it was a fad, it was a trend, it's no longer feasible, and they're out. And now they're on to something easier, the next new trend that you gotta try. And to be perfectly honest, they're a bunch of I can't believe he said <laughs> He doesn't respect women. <laughs> <laughs> These are the same people that were talking about drop shipping two years ago, and now they're promoting TikTok affiliates, and in a couple months, they'll be on to something else. Because the majority of them, they're not even capable of building a sustainable business. Instead, they're in the business of selling you a dream and then falling short on giving you the foundation for it. They want to teach you just enough so you buy their course, and then it's on to the next trend. And I hate that. I feel like it's extremely misleading. So is Amazon FBA dead? No, but it's not easy. You actually have to want to build a business and not just a hustle. So I'm here to help you truly understand what the landscape of selling on Amazon looks like from someone who's been doing this for the past 10 years. We started in 2013, and in those 11 years, we've sold over $500 million on Amazon and currently are projected to do 70 million this year. So I want to show you how to actually do it from someone who's actually doing it and not just trying to sell you a course. So first off, why are people quitting? It's been a tough year for entry level Amazon sellers who are getting their information from fake gurus who don't provide them with a foundation for growing a thriving business. So why are people quitting? I kind of get it. I mean, if you're getting poor advice and you think it's correct and then your account gets deactivated, it's really hard to come back from that. There's a lot of things that do genuinely suck about Amazon, but that's in every single business. Find me one business that doesn't have its cons and its negatives, and I'll jump on that today. But every business has its risks and its rewards, its benefits, its cons, and Amazon is no different. The problem with so many sellers right now is that they unfortunately had misinformation from the wrong people, they didn't build strong relationships with suppliers, Suppliers. They don't know where their products are coming from that they're purchasing. They don't have the right guidelines and the right understanding of how to ship those products. So they're violating Amazon's terms of services. And then when Amazon backfires and it hurts their business, they don't have a structure to get out of it. So they quit. Really, it's just a bunch of amateurs that came in. And the issue with these amateurs that are starting to sell on Amazon is they're buying inauthentic products, counterfeit goods from illegitimate suppliers who can't verify their supply chain, their accounts are getting suspended, then they're going on social media and complaining that Amazon FBA doesn't work. Or the other side, they're complaining about the fees that Amazon has historically increased every year since Amazon was created in the late 1990s, and those fees are universal. They affect all of us the same. They affect you the same way they affect me. This is all coming from Amazon amateurs who don't understand the fee structures that Amazon has in place. And they use those fee structures to talk trash about selling on Amazon instead of you using those fee structures to navigate and incorporate them into your business to thrive. So here's some facts that show a different picture. 40% of all online purchases are made on Amazon.com. And Amazon did $700 billion last year. And 60% of those sales were from everyday people like you and I. That is $480 billion sold by regular people like you and me. And just to give some context to that, 10 years Years ago, Amazon was doing less than a third of what it is today, and regular people like you and me were only capturing 30% of that market. So there is a lot more opportunity today than ever before, and the numbers don't lie. And I'd imagine in two to three years from now, that percentage of third-party sellers winning the sales will be closer to 80%. I mean, yeah, just looking back, there was only about 10,000 Amazon sellers a few years ago that did over a million dollars a year. Today, it's over 25,000 sellers that do over $1 million in sales every year. That's a lot of money up for grabs. So what does this say about Amazon and the trend? Is it moving upward or in the opposite direction that you're hearing from the Google? I'd say it's probably moving upwards. So here's how to sell on Amazon the right way. First of all, you cannot get away with the scammy stuff that you used to be able to get away with many years ago. Amazon no longer favors sellers who are looking to make a quick buck. They favor sellers who are operating legitimate companies. If you go on YouTube right now and search drop shipping on Amazon, you'll see hundreds of videos of people telling you to drop ship 
on Amazon.com. That is not allowed and you are going to get banned. The crazy part is we've heard and seen tens of thousands of accounts in the past two years get suspended for that same exact reason and yet people are still trying to teach you and show you that as a method to building a business online. It's not gonna work. So here's what works. Finding good suppliers. Suppliers that you can build that personal relationship with where you get access to their inventory, they get access to your money and you're buying legitimate verifiable products that you can resell on Amazon. So when it comes to suppliers, your supplier either needs to have a direct relationship with the brand or the manufacturer in order to verify their supply chain. The other side is brand direct relationships where you establish a relationship with the brand directly to purchase their inventory. But here's the thing, these brands have dozens of other sellers contacting them weekly. So you need to be able to stand out from the crowd and become an asset for their company instead of a liability. Does that sound easy? No, there's definitely a barrier of entry to building a direct relationship with a brand. You have to provide something of value in order for them to want to work with you. But that's where you could separate yourself from the rest of the herd who's dropping out, quitting, and then filming videos and posting them on YouTube. That's the difference between a business that started in COVID where everything was easy selling online to those businesses that are leaving today while other businesses like ours are continuing to thrive year after year for over 10 years now. And the only way you're gonna be able to provide value to these brands is if you've put systems in place and you build out a team because you understand the processes behind the scene of building a successful Amazon business that aligns with the platform versus something that goes against it because you're playing in the gray market. Another super important aspect of selling on Amazon or building any business is sales and profits. It's obviously really cool to see the sales flowing in, but you gotta be analyzing your numbers and making sure the profits are also healthy as well. For us, there's specific KPIs that we're paying attention to. Our OPA, which is our operating profit per ASIN, our PCPA, our production cost per ASIN, and our NEPA, our net profit per ASIN. We're always analyzing every single listing that we sell and ensuring that it's hitting our margin thresholds for every single product that our team brings in and then sells. And speaking of teams, you have to build one. In the beginning, you're gonna be wearing all the hats. You're the operator, you're gonna be doing the product research, the supplier research, the purchasing, the prepping, the shipping, the managing of the pricing. But soon, you're going to have to establish a team around you that can help assist you with those day-to-day -day activities. Initially, that may be a virtual assistant to help with managing the supplier relationships and researching these products. And eventually, you may need in-house employees to help with the prepping and the shipping of this inventory to alleviate your time in the day-to-day -day so you can focus on the growth of the company. And the only way to ensure that your team is moving in the right trajectory is having these three things. SOPs, SOPs, SOPs. <laughs> And just to show you that's possible, you can start from nothing like we did. 10 years ago, the business was started with a few thousand dollars out of Sebastian's basement. We didn't have a warehouse, we didn't have a team, we didn't have SOPs at that time, but the most important thing is we started. And as the business grew, we started documenting what needed to be done so we could track what we were doing daily and continue to be consistent in those daily tasks so the business can grow. By year one, we got our first warehouse. By year two, we got our second warehouse. And now six warehouses, Warehouses later, $70 million a year, a team of 50 so employees, we're crushing it. And we're not the only ones who are succeeding. There's a lot of people inside of our community that are continuing to thrive while these other gurus are saying Amazon is dead. Like Lucas, for instance, he joined our community six months ago, and at this point, he's doing over six figures a month on Amazon. Then there's Carlos, who was able to give up his full-time job and take on Amazon full-time, and soon his wife is going to be quitting her full-time job so she could help join this family business. And then there's Adam, who's doing over a million dollars a month with a very small team because we've shared with him the proper infrastructure and setup so he can continue to grow his business. The point is, every time I hear about quitters, I actually get pumped. I don't mean to have this shit-eating smirk on my face, but you don't understand. I've seen this for 10 years now. Every two years, there's a whole new cycle of Amazon sellers who want to teach you how to sell.
sell, or this is the new trending way, or drop shipping, or FBM, or retail arbitrage, whatever it may be, they come and they go with this limited understanding because they sold for a few months or sold $10,000 in products, they now think they know the way to build a sustainable business. They don't, and the proof is in the pudding. And that's why we continue to stay in this game, we outlast them, and we're not the only ones. There's others like us who are quietly continuing to scale their businesses, continuing to thrive, and Amazon isn't going away. So I will see you in another 10 years when I'm filming a video similar to this one. So if you want more info on this and you're just getting started, don't buy those gurus courses. We have a ton of free content all over the internet for you to start learning from today. Just right here on YouTube, there's over 500 videos that you can start watching right now. And if you're at a point in your business where you're struggling or you're beginning to plateau and you wanna know how to scale, well, DM us on Instagram and let us help you get to the next level.